Um, yeah, so then that's... Uh, oh, the one other thing I wanted to mention is when you're doing this... So if you run Velma Parallel, this is mostly being automated for you. Uh, so that's how Velma Parallel works is... But Velma automatically sets up the structure because you provide one large map, you provide all the pore points, but then uh, Velma then resolves uh, the order of who's going to flow into who regarding subreach to subreach, and then works up, a, automatically sets up a folder scheme system, and then as it's setting it up, is tracking all of this information. Because it developed a reach map during initialization, it's resolved all of these I index contributions from one location to another. So, um, but here, we would do this all manually when we want to do uh, like a 30 or 90 meter low res simulation flowing into this, like this example, three meter high res simulation. But we're just, we're mimicking what Velma Parallel automatically does for us. And the, but what I want to show you here is that when you have a, um, you have an area of interest that is not the full watershed. So in Velma Parallel, you're providing an entire map and you're providing, it It would, if you delineated any of those subreaches, um, you wouldn't hit the edge of the map. It, in Velma Parallel, the data being provided by the user represents the full watershed. Here though, we have this three meter setup that is just a chunk out of the full watershed. And so uh, you have to then, in this case, you have to manipulate the edge of the map so that JPM will flat process this data. And to do that, uh, we have this thing called the roll-off tool, which is just a Python tool that you provided the input data, the raw elevation data, and it just manipulates the edge. Um, it's defaulted to the five rows and columns all the way around. And I'm gonna zoom in on here and you can see that the, the tool just simply takes the input dim and then drops off the edge of the elevation. So this is uh, 305, 296, 287, uh, 278, and 269. Those may have not been equal interval drop-offs because this is a flat process result. So JPDIM and flat processing may have manipulated these even a little further. But this steep rolled off drop, um, and I'm almost thinking about, let's see if I can. So, you know, you have, you have your, um, your elevation train, but then what's going on here is this tool then takes this train right here and then it just drops off the edge like this. And so now your elevations, <clears throat> actually maybe it'd be more like that but I think you get the point uh, so your elevations now drop off so that when flat processing occurs and they drop off steeply so that way when flat processing occurs you're able to get proper flow inside the watershed so the area that we care about gets flat processed correctly but the entire edge of the map flow is allowed to get to those edges and um, roll off which is why we call it the roll off tool uh, because of that though, let's focus in over here. You do want to be careful and pretty conservative on where you put your flow path. You know, I wouldn't put it like, there's a flow path here along this edge, but uh, over off to the east, but I wouldn't make my flow path right here, um, right up near this, because this is at some point, of course, bogus along this edge. but. You know, focusing over here on this idea of there's where I think there's a, a bridge system and this roadway. You know, this is far in, well away from the edge, uh, and so, uh, and then you can also visualize this, of course, in like um, in GIS, and you could look at these flow paths and make sure that wherever you pick is still representative of uh, reality. So, uh, but yeah, I just want to bring that up with um, when you're running a subsection that is not a full watershed. So. so that's the setup side, I hope, and all the, oh, there's one other thing that, depending on your version of JPM, 
Uh, this is another very nice tool that I like is, uh, let's see, oh, I think I just wasn't reading this correctly. This is it. Save cell indices as ASCII grid. <coughs> this is really nice for these setups. What this does is it is going to export um, the ASCII grid for the data loaded. and but what it's going to export is the actual I index positions. So it's going to provide you a map that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, cell indices all the way across, all the way to the last one here. Um, of, wow, that wasn't exactly the last cell, but you know, um, the uh, 569,022. So um, that's nice because then I load those into QGIS and then when you have that loaded into QGIS or ArcPro or whatever GIS you like and you're playing with these and you're like focusing in like well I want it to be this pixel well if you have your I index cell indice map loaded as well then you can use a tool like this <clears throat> and you could click on it and identify you know I don't have one here loaded but if you load it in and then you clicked at that location then your cell indices Identify, um, identify results, which Arc Pro also has the same thing. It will then tell you the I index at that position. Of course, you can also go through the steps I demonstrated here where you like visually line them up and match them, and then you can do the same thing by finding the XY I index here as well. So I just want to throw that up. Um, hopefully that wasn't confusing. If it was, sorry, just ignore that. Um, but so you have your relocation manifest, you've ran your upstream, so you have your flow results. So then how do you now run this in uh, Velma? So you have to run this from Velma command line. It will not work with the GUI. You can run your first set of results, your upstream results. You could run those in the GUI, or you could acquire those from a Velma parallel run, or you could run Velma command line to get those. Um, those don't matter because no matter how you run it, you're going to end up with the data, this data set here. You're going to end up with these things. And then you can create your relocation manifest. And then here I have the program arguments in from Eclipse. So this looks a little different, but I'm also going to demo how to do this in PowerShell here in a minute. But I like thinking about it from this perspective first. So in Eclipse, I have run configurations and this mimics command line and so I have this floodplain run here hopefully this is big enough to read but I wanted to just point out to people who are, don't use command line which includes me I've learned a lot about command line uh, working from command line working with Velma uh, but you have two different pieces of information that you can feed into the command line the typical one that maybe people have already done who are watching this is you can launch Velma, you could launch a Velma GUI, you could launch Velma command line, uh, Vel Velma alt, you run all those with uh, extra memory. And so that's a, um, that's a virtual machine or VM argument. And so it has a single dash XMX 6G. So that's how you would launch with more memory. Versus there's also program arguments. And those are things that were built into Velma, um, like the relocation file. They're, they start with two dashes, and they have very specific tags on them. So here we have relocation file. Um, it's case, I think, it, pretty sure it's case sensitive. So lowercase r, uppercase f equals, and then the file path to that relocation CSV file that you created. Um, if you're running a Velma parallel, so this setup is both doing multi-resolution and running um, those um, uh, those uh, zones um, or uh, sub-reaches within the Carnation floodplain uh, under Velma parallel. So it's actually this is a blend of both those styles of running Velma. But again, uh, if you you know, or even if you're just running straight Velma parallel from command line, you know, dash dash max processes equals in this case four. Um, but so what's going on here is we have our program arguments are the XML does not require a dash dash in front of it 
but then any optional things that you want to change regarding the typical setup then has dash dash and in this case relocation file axe processes and so this is just a visual to I just wanted to point out that we're about to do to distinguish between the Java virtual machine arguments that are here versus program arguments related directly to Velma. And so then on this side, that's what we have. Uh, let's see if I can space this out so it's hopefully clean. I don't know if I can. I guess I cannot. I don't think I can zoom in on this. Um, but yeah, so when you uh, launch, actually, I'll do this. Let's see if I can do 